let's log in as user on user five today. And um, now you will see a little bit of a user interface. And if I try now uh, to create an application using version six, I simply won't have it. Yep. Um, and then you can enable that again. But once again, the application that are already running on version 6, uh, they will still be running on version 6. And that's pretty much all settings for admin, admin is administrator or server. So it's really simple. It doesn't really add any pain, any extra management to you. And now let's see how it works for for users, for developers. So once you logged in as a user, uh, you have a list of your applications here, uh, which provides the following information. It's up URI, up root directory modes. It has two modes, development and production, and I will cover that later. It has status, where the application is started or stopped, and it provides you actions for started application, you can either stop it. Uh, this is something I've done now. You can restart the app. You can edit it or delete. For applications that are stopped, uh, you can start it, edit, and uh, delete the application. Uh, so let's create a new application now. Let's say I'm going to use version. Eight, let's update this page because I am disabled version six and then I brought it back. So now I should have it available. Yeah, you see it's back. Um, let's say I want to create an application. So what you do, you provide application groups, uh, test seven, seven, whatever. You obviously will have a real name uh, with real URL. And basically that's it. Now you can press create and we will automatically create application start top file, op.js. Let's see how it works. Yep, it's here. And to show you um, the further settings that a user has, I, uh, I'll probably now I'll show you how to deploy it using IDE. I'm going to use WebStorm. So let's do that. Let's create a new project. Uh, I'll keep the same name just to keep things simple to not get myself confused. Uh, what you do next is you go to WebStorm settings and preferences. And now you have to set up deployment settings here add a name for your server and choose sftp connection because you will need ssh anyways and i recommend you to make it default uh, because then when you be uploading files you can uh, set automatic uploads uh, it will up to, uh, automatically upload to your default server so it saves time in a way and here you have to provide your sftp host is mine a uh, username i am user 5 and a pause just press save password and I strangely show that my sftp is invalid okay apologies for that um i'll explain that's probably something with to do with my vpn uh uh, another thing that you need to do is to add methods and it will be home your username and to 77 and that should work but just to follow with the demonstration because for some reason my sftp connection doesn't work i will use uh one of the apps i've created while i was preparing for this demonstration let's let's use this one yeah, I will open the application I've created before. Is this one? I'll go to edit menu. And what it does, 
I say what we do is we automatically detect configuration file, which is package JSON. If you have it uploaded to your web server, we'll automatically detect it. And here from, a, uh, from this menu, uh, you can edit it if you need it. And also here you can run npm install and we'll install it. Yep, successful. And then all the scripts that you provided in your package JSON, you can run by pressing this, uh, this button, run JS scripts. Just to show you what scripts I have, they all simple, they basically just print this line. And let's choose, let's say test three and run this script. So you can see it's running. And here comes std out, uh, and it prints this line, echo error not as specified. And also, uh, you can add here uh, your environmental variables. There will be global variables, uh, variables uh, projects for your application. So I have here something that says that x is equal, uh, its value is uh, 1000. And let's say that y is equal to press save. And to show you my code, it brings some information uh, as hello no GS server. But if we go now. Uh, to check what it shows, you obviously will have uh, a real URL and uh, a real app running that will do whatever you want it to do, whether it's a uh, web magazine or web shop, uh, dot com. which one I'm using, test 11. Yeah, so it's basically prints here and here it provides you global uh, global variables. It says x is thousand and y is two. And while you would like to change in your code, you can go to WebStorm and say hello world. Um, don't forget to to make it useful. Just go to tools deployment options and uh, this setting apply changed files automatically to the default server is normally is by default set to never i prefer to say set it to always then all your changes by pressing common s they upload automatically to your server you can see it here that is being transferred and Another important detail that you have to do is to restart your application after you uploaded changes. Uh, so yeah, let's check now. Yep, it says hello world. <laughs> and I've promised that I will explain what development and production mode means and when to use them. So in your package JSON file, you have dependencies. And these are dependencies for production mode when your application is in production. But when you work in it as a developer, you may have way more dependencies. They, they will be uh, called dev dependencies with a capital D. And so basically, uh, when your application is in development mode, all dependencies from dev dependencies sections will be picked up and detect and when you switch to develop production mode sorry um, your dependencies from dependencies will be picked up um, yeah so it is as simple as it looks like your application runs like basically in two clicks you install it then in two clicks you deploy it just once again all you have to do is to go to preferences, deployments, provide your IP, username, password, and in mappings, just provide uh, provide this the path on the server to your application. 
and that's it connected then you go here you download it just simply by uh, calling pop-up menu deployment and download from test and you get in all your files here and once you edited that don't forget to save it or set up an automatic upload uh, upload yeah to your server and once you've added some changes to your application uh, go here restart it and you will see in front uh, that it gives the correct information what we're we gonna do next so we're gonna concentrate on developers